everyone, welcome to Tabito Stories. Today we have our guest, uh, Gabriel Spencer. He's uh, one of my former teammates at Fresno City College, and he's a poet. So today I will be bringing him, and he will be talking to us about poetry. He will be talking us to, to us about himself. He will be sharing his story. So yeah, let's give it up to Spencer. Yeah. How are you guys? Um, as I said, I am a poet and a former um, Fresno City student. Um, one thing, one thing I, I do, I do know about poetry is that um, it helps you to put most of your your, your thoughts on paper. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. So yeah, yeah. So can you tell us a bit, a little bit about your story and uh, how did you start writing poetry? Where it- um, a little bit about me. Um, I was I was born in Baltimore, Maryland, um, and um, I never had a I never had a knack for writing. Never I never enjoyed writing. Honestly, I was a science kid when I was growing up. I wanted to um I wanted to uh, I wanted to be a paleontologist. I was like you know I, I like I like um, fossils and everything like that. You know I like science. So that that was my goal growing up as a kid. Um, it wasn't until I left home and I, I moved. Um, I moved to Arkansas. Moved to Arkansas to be um, to stay with my uncle, and um, he um, he was a, a pastor at the time, and he's a professor now. He was very big on English, and I wasn't. I was slipping in English, so I would pass all my other classes, my math classes, my science classes. And she said, you know. Why, why, what's, what's wrong with, why, what's wrong with English? Why are you bringing D's and C's into English? I, said, oh, I don't know, man, I don't know, I don't, um, I don't, that's not my forte. And, uh, you know, so he let me slide for, for the, uh, you know, is really was nothing that he could do because the school year was uh, forming to an end. So he let me slide and summer came around. And summer came around, I, I was, uh, I was, so I was always an active, I was always an active, um, an active student before I even left Baltimore, I was boxing. Um, but so in Arkansas, I didn't have anywhere to box. So um, you had to drive at least 25 miles to get to the nearest gym. And it was, it was, it was tedious. And um, I thought to myself, okay, maybe I'll play football. I said, no, I didn't play football. I didn't play football. So I wound up being alone for that summer, just sitting in my thoughts. And um, I used to go out to um, because there was a there was a uh, a church near the parsonage. There's a church, um, and behind that church was a field. So I'd take my chair and uh, my coffee because I I drank I drank coffee because he drank coffee <laughs> at that time because I was I was still young. So I take my chair and my coffee and I go and I sit out there, and I eventually try to sit out there until my my peers came back for football. But, playing football and it is in in Arkansas playing football is a way of life it is <laughs> it's a way of life especially in a morning where I was so I'd go up there and I'd sit and I'd wait for my peers to get off um, out of practice or you know the actual curricular activities and I would just sit and just look into the sky and listen to the birds watch the deer and whatnot and one day you know he calls me in um like mid-summer he calls me and he says you know, um, we're not gonna be sitting around here. You know, just just breathing up all my good air. <laughs> so um, he gives me this this grammar book and a legal pad, and he says, "Go, go, go, learn, <laughs> go, um, go study." She says, "Go study." He sent me back outside to study. So you're gonna sit there and make yourself useful to prepare for um, the next school year. I said, "Okay." I never really opened. I didn't. I I never opened the grammar book. I never did. But I did. But I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't as engaged as I engaged as I should have been. So I I wrote on the legal pad. I just would write down my thoughts, and um, I would write like little mini short stories, mini mini kind of, you know, kind of try more like comic books, more like comic books, and um. But I, I was not an artist. 
I was not an artist, so I didn't I didn't have any pictures. <laughs> it was just kind of it was just a bunch of dialogue. So I would write, and I'll come back in and say, you know, okay, tell me what you learned. You know, he, he would kind of give me a, a test every week or every uh, every few days. Okay, all right, what's this? You know, give me the the re, redo the parts of speech. Now tell me some, you know, adjectives or whatever, I, I, whatever we were discussing. You know me to formulate a better, more clear and concise sentence as the summer progressed. So I eventually had to open the grammar book, but that's where my journey began writing, sitting out there and my thoughts bored to death and writing many, just, just short dialogue, that's where it began, writing many stories. And most of those stories today are, are still in Arkansas, honestly, they are, I, I left them there when I owned when I moved. And that's where it began. And um it's a it's a lot that that goes into that because I one, I didn't know how to write. So I didn't know how to write. When I read when I read my stories to my uncle, he would say, Well, you know, what is this? <laughs> what is it? So, you know, I see your vision, but you you um you can't write, man. You suck at writing. So that's when I said, okay, well, um, I think I do like writing. So I think I do want to be a writer. And he um, says, all right, well, you got to open your grammar book. And we spent that summer, um, we had, we had, um, he had a wall in, in, um, in the hallway where he, he would, he, I, I don't even know what he would, he was doing all day. So some days he, as my uncle had a routine, he would wake up. Um, he'd wake up and um, he'd, uh, he'd talk on the phone with his friend and he'd talk about his seminary and all that stuff. And then he'd go out for and smoke a cigarette and then he'd leave. Okay, like, where is he going? Everyone he'd, <laughs> everyone he'd leave. And he'd, he'd come back and he'd put up, you know, like um, he, he had a, a collection of words that he had on the wall. And I would have to wake up in the morning and basically memorize those words and one of them was you know consistent you know wisdom and just 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 words that were just self-affirmations that's what they were and um he would switch them up sometimes because i was trying to expand my vo my, my vocabulary so he would switch them up and um that's how i i kind of began to formulate a, a clear sentence and um, man it's a lot that goes into it. It's, a, it's truly a lot that goes into it. And um, that was my beginning. That was the beginning for me. And, and, and I, um, so I went back, um, went back, uh, back to school. And I'm okay, all right, I can write now. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give this a shot. I can write. I'm, I'm, you know, I've, I've learned or I can learn. I've, we went through the entire grammar book that summer, you know, and um, I studied all night. But just no read that. This is the, the type of person my, my uncle was. I studied all night. At first, I wouldn't, you couldn't get me to study anything <laughs> although i did like science i never studied for it i never really prepared myself i liked the hands-on kind of thing so i was like okay i'm always a hands-on even if i even if i don't you know go into go 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 into that that career field i know i'm going to do something hands-on so he couldn't really get me to study and he got me to study and I went back into school and I, I wrote my first paper. And I said, okay, that, that's pretty good. That was my teacher come and say, you know, that was better than the last paper. I said, hey, better, better. You know, I studied all summer. That was because um, you know, I was I was ready, you know, I was I was motivated. Like I studied all summer. You mean it's better. It was an excellent paper. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell my teacher, my teacher, how to grade my paper. But um, I did all right that 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 um school year but in the middle of the school year i moved and i moved to ohio i moved to ohio and um, i was i was timid i was scared because if you've ever been to ohio um especially Cle cleveland bedford maple heights um not necessarily i never 
I, I first moved to Scrumsville, Scrumsville, Ohio, and it is is the it's challenging, especially when you're a kid that just got a hold on what writing is. <laughs> it's challenging, and my my teachers there, my first teacher, they're like, "Okay, do this, write this," and then you know, I'm in English class, and I'm like, "Oh shit, man!" What? I come home with a like juggling paper. It's like, man, I don't know what to do. I don't know. To do. And um, I got a C. I got a C. They, I, I had a D. I had a D when, when um. I had a D. No, yeah, I had a C, and um, I went into the classroom. Like it's almost the summer is about to come, and she's like, "I don't know what I can do for you, dear. I don't know." Blah, blah, blah. And I say, "Well, wow. well, Reese, I made up a paper here. You know, I can't bring, I can't bring the C home. I don't want to bring the C home because this time I was trying to get a car because <laughs> I was I was getting my license and my my." Uncle had just bought a car. He just bought um, uh, the Ford Escape. This is 2014, so he bought the new 2014 Ford Escape. And I'm like, okay, I want to drive this for the summer. I'm get, you know, I'm gonna turn 15. I'm getting my license. I'm gonna drive this drink. So, so um, <clears throat> that was a thing. He said, okay, don't no no C's, no no D's, nothing below B, B's, B, B's and A. So I said, okay, I I didn't tell my uncle. For like a for like a week that I had to see, yeah, he was asking me in a wheelchair for the car this week, and um, I went back in to our classroom just before the um, the school year ended, and she was like, uh, "There's nothing I can do for you." So I eventually told my uncle. My uncle came up and he's like, "Just do this, do this." He's he's like, you know, trying to trying to you know butter her up pretty much, butters her up, and I get to do redo one of my papers, and. She marked it up, man. It was she. She told me like it was so terrible <laughs> because the moment I rushed it, I did, I did, I rushed it, and um, um, I didn't, I didn't, because I was like, okay, this is my opportunity. Let me get this done instead of taking my time, and that taught me a lesson when writing is to to just read every sentence, read every sentence, and I rushed it. I she gave the the grade that I got was high enough to to give me a B, but the paper itself disappointed. It was disappointing. It was, it was, it was disappointing. <clears throat> and, um, and, um, and that was my experience in Scrollingsville, Ohio. And if you ever been to Scrollingsville or you go to Scrollingsville High School, it is academically challenging. It is real. And every kid that goes there is just like, I don't know. I don't know where they where they make those kids. Those kids are smart. <laughs> I, don't know where they, I don't know where they make those kids. Those kids are are there. It was challenging for me because I I I kind of felt like self self. You know, I was like, you know, I, it kind of like lowered my self esteem because I didn't feel like I I was up for the challenge, but I, I was. But so we wind up moving to Bedford, Ohio. And Bedford is um was always wrestling and stuff. So Bedford is where I really made my my mark wrestling. And um, I walk on. I didn't even I didn't even really talk to my my teachers. I walk right into the wrestling. I'm like you know okay, who's a coach? You know let's do this. <laughs> who's a coach? Like like you know you know how 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 wrestlers can get. And I'm like, who's uh, and um um you know. I met the coach, Coach Hirschberger. Um, I think he's. I think he uh, te- te- he teaches at another school now. But he was a mathematics teacher and less, and a wrestling assistant coach. <laughs> and um, that's what I was focused on. I was focused on, but I was always I was timid. I was quiet. I was most at most times nervous because in Ohio, there the presence is known. People are like over. They're not over the top, but they. They are like they find boats. They're fun boring and they're there. And so for me, being switched around from Baltimore and you know, all that and and then into Arkansas, I didn't really I really didn't have the character that that I was I developed in myself and trying to identify who I was. So I didn't uh, have a character that truly fit. And I went in there and um I never talked to anyone for like like a month and um this dude Jordan James 
and you know I'm on the wrestling team. And he starts talking to me, and then most of the rest, so let's I start talking to the wrestling guys, and um, and I stopped writing. I stopped writing at this time. I writing and um, I I um I stopped writing. <laughs> and I said to myself, you know, okay, that's not what I want to do, man. It's not what I want. I gave up. I, I, I gave up, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna just wrestle and go to school. <laughs> and um, that was a big mistake because I I had to make up for a lot a lot of lost time. Not to say that I should have wrestled over writing, but I could have did both. I could have did both. You know, writing you could you you take five minutes and write something, and now you're a writer. Simple. You know, it's not necessarily what society says, but more from what of what you think of yourself and what you think of your, your creation. But uh, what got me back writing was one time, one time I was um I was uh oh man, I was walking through through the halls, walking through the halls. Um listen, have my headphones in, I'm listening, listening to music, listening to music. And there's this girl, um, there's this girl, man, that that um I used to, you know, I used to check her out, man. But I was, I was nervous, and nervous, and um, like summer hit, and uh, you know, when we we started talking, you know, but one day, um, you know, I had so much to tell her, man, because I, I, one, I, I, my, my, and as a as a young as a young guy, I would say, you know, um, to, you know, for all the young guys out there, man, just. Tell tell her how you feel, because <laughs> then you you look at it like 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 uh, you know a year later you're like dang man you should go back up. So <clears throat> I have so much to tell her, and um among some many other girls that I didn't I didn't tell her didn't, didn't tell them anything you know. So um summer hits and I. I got the opportunity to um, I actually you know let's go get some tea or something I don't know something like that so we're in the, we're in the car and we're driving and I'm nervous and I kind of like all right I, I told her like I can't drive I could drive but I made a U-turn in like the wrong intersection for some reason and people were honking at me so <laughs> I was that nervous so um and um I, we pulled over just to, like to get something to eat or whatnot or just chilling and I had so much to tell her, but I didn't know. I said, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna write it out. No, I didn't tell her what said, but and we wound up break, breaking ways and we moved on. You know, we, we didn't we didn't date him. I didn't express myself. So I wrote I wrote it out. I wrote like three or four pages of what I would what I would tell this person. And then then I started writing again and I would be in class and I would just listen to people's conversations and and then instead of me um, engaging in the conversation, I would go home and and um and sit down and say, okay, what would I have said if I would engaged in that conversation? And I would write dialogue. Okay, bro, oh, that's what I started. Started again, writing dialogue. And um, and I got out of high school and I joined the Navy. And the Navy, I spent most of my time writing in the Navy. I really did. I would. Go, I would go to um I would go to work like five o'clock in the morning. I would make sure I'm all clean and, and fit it out. And um I depending sometimes you go to work five o'clock in the morning, you didn't get off till like seven. But you know, not not all the time. Most time you get off like three or something like that. So I go to work five o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> and um while I was driving to work, I listened to I listen to Lana Del Rey. <laughs> Lana Del Rey. Um, just to like cool me down. And I'd sit in the parking lot before I got into work. And um, I I just write, I'd write poetry. And I had I had about three books, three, four books of poetry that I, I wrote, I've written. And um, you know, by the time I got out of the service, and I, I left them in my barracks. <laughs> so I don't know they're 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 up in the air. I don't know where they are now. I don't know where they are now. I left them in my barracks, and I've seen for a lot of my writing. It's just it's just lost. It's just lost. <clears throat> now I write, and um, now I write. I write every day, or I try to write every day. 
the last two days I haven't written. But um, even even before, um, even last night, last night, um, I was like, you know, what what will I say when I what will I say? You know, what how will I tell my story? And I said, okay, I'm gonna write about it. So I I I try to write, and for all the writers that are there, sometimes I write for no reason. I write for no, no reason, just to see what I'm gonna say, and I don't. I don't have guidelines, especially to my poetry. There's no guidelines to my poetry, no guidelines at all. <clears throat> I don't, I don't go into writing with the, a sense of okay, I want to write this. Or I, want to, I, I will, I will put a song on. I will put some shade on and let it play in the background, or I, or I have it silent, it's silent, and I'll, I'll make. I'll make a coffee or a tea just to smell it while I write. I won't even drink it. I'll just smell it <laughs> just to smell it while I write. I sit, sit at my sit at my uh, my table, my, my desk, and I'll I'll just I'll just let it go. Let, let it be free. Just go ahead. Okay, that looks cool. You know, if it wasn't cool, hey, it's well, it's there. It can't go anywhere. <laughs> it can't go anywhere. And it all this it all depends on whether I want to let <clears throat> let people see what I write. And um, I improve my writing. A lot, and um, I was just talking to um, my 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 uncle the other day. Um, he was telling me, you know, you you're you're a good writer, and I I, <clears throat> I have stories and um, semi books, you know, that I that I'm finishing that I'm finishing. But honestly, um, I got to start what I finish. Just being just being transparent with myself I have to start what I finish because <clears throat> I sometimes I go into writing my books and writing poetry for a month and that's like I want to write this finish and write poetry for a month. and so I I sometimes I get it's in between the two but what I do to continually expand my writing and expand my, my vocabulary um something that my my uncle you know told me to do but I stopped doing and he told me, called me, and told me to do it again. <laughs> and um, 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 when you're reading a book, so the last book I was reading was Rich Dad Poor Dad. That's the last book I was reading. When you're reading a book, um, you if you come across words that are, you know, that you don't understand that. You don't know how they're used in this. Even if you know the word, you don't know how they're used in a sentence or you know whatever it is. Write them down, define them, find out the origin and how they're used. And every morning, go over the words so that way you can use them in your writing. And it helps. It helps because when I'm when I'm when I'm writing, and it's basically called freelancing. So when when I'm writing and it's not guided and I have no particular thought process of what I want to write about. <clears throat> I I tend to always stumble upon a moment where I'm like, okay, what am I saying? I ex ask myself, what am I saying? And what am I going to say next? And it's all based upon a feeling. So if I if I feel sad or if I feel happy, I let that guide me. And sometimes I don't have the right words to express what I'm what I'm trying to say on the paper. So I try to expand <clears throat> I try to expand my vocabulary as, as much as possible. So that way I don't have to stop while I'm writing. I can I can flow and you know really engage, really be who I am while I'm writing. Because when I'm writing, one thing I do tell you, I don't I don't um I do take on a character and I take on the character of the atmosphere which I'm writing and so like I, like I said, you know, um, if I'm writing a story, I try to embody the character that I'm writing about. <clears throat> I try to embody that. It's like, what what is in the mind of this character? Because honestly, I am I am not really a. I learned this about myself that I am not a a writer that misses out on dialogue. I'm not like a writer that talks about the action. I really talk about what's going on in the mind. Basically. I talk about people's mind. So I am I try to embody that. So a lot of times I'm writing, I'll be sitting there and I'm just thinking like 
you know, trying to, trying to, I'll be trying to, you know, if my, my character is, is a good person, I'll, 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 you know, smile. I'll smile before I write because I want to, I want to feel happy. I want my writing to feel happy. And it's like when you, when you're telemarketing and um, I was reading this little, this little thing online that, that um, telemarketers can tell when people are smiling over the phone or something like that, something that I was reading. So I, I figured, you know, if they can tell and it improves that mood and conversation, then it should improve my mood when I'm writing, when I want to be descriptive about a happy character. And I don't do that for poetry, although I do that when I'm writing. So um, I got out of the Navy and I, I enrolled in Fresno City College. <laughs> That's where I made it. Enrolled in Fresno City College. Out here, I am. I'm walking, walking. Um, and I see uh, Coach Kisa. I'm walking. I say, "Okay, um, how do I, how do I wrestle?" You know. He's like, "What are you talking about, man?" It's <laughs> like, "Go." I'm trying to do Kisa voice. Go over there. Go over there. All right, Spencer. You know, go, go, go. Um, go in there and get you some shoes. I didn't have any shoes, so Brian. Brian gave me some shoes, and uh, I got my shoes. <clears throat> I'm ready to wrestle, and um, I took off writing for about half the season. Half the season, um, and, and um, I wasn't writing. I was recording, doing spoken word. I ride my bike. <clears throat> ride my bike everywhere. I was. I, I like riding my bike. I ride my bike, and uh, I just record. What I was, I just start talking. People would be looking at me. What is he talking about? <laughs> He's crazy. Because I'd be on campus just talking, just talking. And um, now I, I did, I did that for the entire rest of the season, almost the entire rest of the season, until I started writing again. <laughs> I just transferred all those recordings onto paper, and it took a long time because sometimes you, you can, you're just talking for, for however long you're talking. Especially when you feel that no one's around. Like, okay, you know, in the shower or when you wake up in the morning. And now I'm I'm here and um I write like I write like uh, <clears throat> I write a lot of things that people don't understand. And I, I I try to it's all from my perspective. And um yeah, um, I write honestly. Honestly, that my, my my most honest in my life. That's my little journey. That's my little journey. I'm ready. That's my journey. Yeah, that's uh, it's interesting the way how you writing kind of developed from uh, from when you were little. You know, it was middle school or high school, right? Yeah, middle school and and high school. Yeah, and how you both through it, and now you're doing it, and I have seen some of you poetry what I have you have been writing and every time I see it like I'm out like this guy he's really good at what he's doing like the story that he's bringing into his writing and you even write you know novels like you know conversation between people and that's something I think is very cool because you know um that's something that I have always admired you know people that are always you know like able to do these things because you know like uh I like getting to know that what's behind it and how they get into that story and how they build it. And I think that's really cool. Uh, I, I get so jealous, man, of um, like, okay, if you ever, and I, um, I, um, I'm almost done with like all the Harry Potters, but if you ever read Harry Potter and you just look at it and you think, I'm just, sometimes I just wonder like, what the heck was she thinking? Like, what was J.K. Rowling thinking? You know, and same thing with, with, with all the Stephen King novels, all, I don't know, 80 something of his books, you know? So <clears throat> I think like, you know, what were they thinking? And if you look at it, if you look at a Harry Potter novel, you probably think, what is this? This is stuff is crazy. But then when you put it on screen and you and you get the whole storyline, you're like, oh wow, this is a great story. And that that's what I try to aim to to, to write 
just all in all, great stories, great stories. And one of one of my barriers with the <clears throat> with that man is um expression. Sometimes, okay, I I have a lot of writings, but I don't always post them. I don't always post them. I feel like sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes um, I was just talking to my friend, and um, I actually, you know, uh, you know, I don't know what I, what I was asking, but I was honestly in self doubt about my writing. That's what pretty much I was asking. You know, what do I do about <clears throat> and um, um she's like man you know you don't, you don't have any time to waste <laughs> and um you know you don't have any time to waste and uh my sister same thing she's like, you don't have any time to waste you know you don't you don't you never you never know with, with writing when with whatever whatever your endeavors are what's gonna happen next you never know so <clears throat> You know, you know, I I tend to um, I tend to not post a lot, not post a lot. And you'll see, you see my my posts. They most of them consist of me either um, running or or my writing. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. So I I want to express more. I want to express more. That's been one of my struggles as, as writing. Um, criticism. I worry about criticism before. I'm even criticized. I criticize my own stuff. I criticize like, hey, what are you saying here? And I, I, I try to, <clears throat> I try to figure out, you know, you know, what I'm saying before I actually put it together. I call one of my friends. You know, call my friend. Okay, help me, help me decipher what this means. Help me, because when I tell you, I don't guide my writing. So, I, I, I don't guide it. I let it flow. How, how it flows, and sometimes I'm done when I'm done with the poem, <clears throat> or like a short kind of quote thing. You know, I'm, I, I'm like, what, what does it mean? <laughs> what, what, what is it? What am I seeing? And only I can decipher that, or the readers can decipher what it means for them. You know, so that's been um that's been a struggle. And I use I use Claudia Rankin's um Citizen. I was reading that. Um, and um, um, the way she was, uh, you know, basically, she she said she said, you know, I one of the things that she said, you know, I feel I if I can remember, I I feel you know the most black when I'm laid to white paint, and I'm not necessarily talking about color or or race, but just just. If you were just to put that somewhere, you know, what does that really, what does that really mean? And um, you know, I decipher it for how I, how I do, you know, and I have my own personal perspective of it. But you know, that's how I kind of that's what made me start looking at analyzing my writing because I asked myself, what does she mean? If I took this out of the perspective that she was saying it in, and she was actually talking about race, but if I took it out of race, what does it mean? And if I, okay, so I said, I did that with a lot of my writings. If I take this out of, if I'm talking about love, if I take this out of love, what does it mean? If I take this out of, you know, this context, what does it mean? And I want each sentence to have meaning without the context. That is it. But, uh, and that's some, that's, that's hard. That's, it's really hard. It doesn't, it, it's, it's hard to, to have each sentence have a meaning for itself without, necessarily relating to the beginning of the poem and um i mean it's hard for me maybe not for some more experienced writers but for me i'm not if it isn't i'm not on that level yet and i, I hope to be and so it, it it gets tough for me because i yeah i, I just write i just write that's right man. so that that's that man. I see your 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 art, man. I, sometimes when I when I see your post, man, I'm like, I'm like, like, dang, you know. I I I was looking at um, I think uh, you the post with um, you drew um, you're holding up your headgear, and it, it's a big collage of other stuff. And I, I particularly look at one, you know, holding up your headgear, and I was like, well, what if? I, I would always think, you know, what if um. What if we did like a comic? What if we did this? What if we did that? I'd be thinking, I, and I'd write about it. I'd, write, I'd just write about it, you know, okay. What would I say? What would I write? 
just test out some dialogue. And I don't, I tried to get into a wrestler mode with right. It is, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, you know, it is, it is with things that I've actually done, it's easier for me to write about things that I haven't done than things that I actually did. Because when I write about wrestling, it's like, I know what this guy feels like in the third period, getting, getting worked on. <laughs> I, know he, I know he feels like, or if he's not getting worked on or somebody, I know what he feels like. So I would be writing, I'll just start laughing. Like, <laughs> he's tired. <laughs> he, he, he's, he's, he's tired. <laughs> and um, I'll be writing, and I'm not that descriptive because I know what he feels like. He's like this this guy's thinking thinking crazy thoughts. <laughs> he's like, oh, you know how I'm gonna take him down, you know? And he's looking back at his corner, like already like his, his coach knows it's over. So he's still looking back at his corner, <laughs> looking for hope from his coach. <laughs> so, so um, and that that is um that is my my writing. You know, it is it is um it's a journey, and I I continually discover I. It's helped me identify who I am, helped me characterize. I continually discover who I am. I, every, I feel like every morning, you change. You change. You don't wake up the same person every morning. You change. Your goals may change. Your morals may change. You know, of course, essentially, you have your habits, but you change. And every morning, I'll change my, my, what, I'm, what I'm writing what I'm directing my things to, you know? And um and when it comes when it comes to writing, it helps me to keep to stay level head writing. Honestly, if I if I don't write put my thoughts out, I you know, I'm walking around like a madman. Um because I get I get <clears throat> I get overwhelmed and I have to it's my form of therapy, expression. I get I get overwhelmed. And I, I need my silence just to write and sit there. And I sit there and, you know, do my thing. And yeah, that, that's, that's, um, that's pretty much the gist of how I, how I formed into becoming the writer that I am today. And I'm um, still writing to this day. So right. And uh, what was the last poem, the, the last writing that you did about when did it came in? How did you? Uh, build it. Um, <laughs> my last poem was at um, three thirty-seven this morning. <laughs> That's my last poem. Honestly, I was up on the phone when I, I shouldn't have been up. When, you know, when you get up, everybody knows now. When, when you're up on the phone and uh, the conversation gets real, real good. <laughs> you know, you know. Um, my last poems, man, was. Today, actually, it's my uh, book, man. I read it here. And uh, this is entirely things that are not guided. And I haven't even revised these things. Oh, man, you put me on the spot. I just wrote through. <laughs> it says here, Dear Winter, I've enjoyed the coat that you laid upon the ground beneath me and walked over you carelessly. Nevermore, now that I know, your white coat is formed below your most tedious creation, black eyes. I don't, I don't know what that means really, but but um, it's not revised in it. But I, I, I still look at it as as what's this? Let me go ahead. What that that one means basically what I'm saying. If Winter was a person and we walked over the white this person. Because of their outer, their outer shell was was looking, you know, because they looked a certain way, and you know, you you would be destroying them, you know, because you don't know what's in the middle of the person. You don't know what it took for that that outer shell, that curly white coat that you see, to be there. And sometimes, for in Winter's case, it formed a layer of ice. And not probably not black eyes, but <laughs> it formed the layer of ice. But you, you all you see is the pearly white coat. So you don't want to, you don't want to ever just go point the finger, or, you know, chastising people because you don't know what it took for them to be the person that they are today. 
the black, the the white. Yeah, the uh, white coat, the white coat above the black eyes. Wow, so that, that is what that one. That's it. Um, this is sort of a quote that I wrote. Um, so I wrote one, two, three, four, five, and I'll, I'll read them for you since um, I've already gotten started, man. You don't understand how hard it is for me to just share stuff. <laughs> it says, it says, contained we are by the ideologies of men who are contained themselves. So what what it what that means is is basically I, I say contained because we live in a world based upon other people's ideologies, based upon their their their, their ideals and what they believe a society should be. <clears throat> and honestly, they're contained themselves by their own perspective of what the world should be or what how people should operate. So that we're all we're all kind of in a in a big bubble of someone's perspective of us. And sometimes we have to step back and say, well, well, you know, dang, you know, we're 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 here, but we're living life based on how someone else said we should live life. And that just goes to government. Government, what the what really is a you know, I know we know what a form of government is, but do we truly want to live like that? Do you I I you know, of course paying taxes and doing what's right helps other people. But what if we can help other people in a different way? And we're not we're not when we're, we're not trying to be, you know, necessarily communist or socialist or anything like that. But you know, I always look at the government and I and I look at society and say, okay, how can I I am contained by the ideologies of someone else who is contained by their own perspective of society. You know, so I, I live in their world, not my own. And that's one thing. I was born on this this world, you know, I was born in this country, you know, I was born in whatever country you first of all, you're born in this world, so it's yours. It's your world. No one can tell you. I feel like if you're born in this world, what, how are you going to tell me how to perceive it, where to go, where I can do things? So, you know, what I can eat and all this stuff. You can't tell me that. This is mine. It belongs to me, just like it belongs to you. So let me have my perspective. And that's one thing that most governments and most, you know, groups of, you know, social classes don't do. They don't let other people have their own perspective because they're contained their perspective of the world. Right. So this one says, my matter is not of time loss, but time gain. Now that's for me. That's for me. I, I write that because I procrastinate. So I wrote that for myself, you know, okay. Don't, don't worry about what you've already done. We know that you... Instead of writing, we know that you you watched Netflix and ate <laughs> last night. So you know we know that we know that already. Just worry about what you can do. <laughs> You're sitting there having a pity party with muffin crumbs on your face. You know we already know you did that. You're guilty. So <laughs> that was for me. Something I was writing for myself. <laughs> this one says, "Bring peace into darkness," though it does not mean that light will come. So <clears throat> I wrote that, um, wrote that thingy to myself, to myself. Basically what I'm saying is you cannot always change people in your atmosphere. You cannot always change people within your, necessarily changing people within the atmosphere that you're in. That's what I'm trying to say. So a lot of times you have people who are more, you know, jipper, you know, they come in and they're happy. They can come into a dark room, of, a room of people who are selling silence, you know, and they're jipper, they're happy. They're, 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 they're nice people. So they're talkative and they're trying to spark conversations everywhere they go. But that does not mean that because you brought in the light, you know, you brought in your peace, who you are, 
it does not mean that you can put it upon other people and they will see who you are. Because they, they, <clears throat> it doesn't mean, you may be the light in the room, but that doesn't mean that you're going to light the entire room. You may be just, just a flashlight in the room. You know, it doesn't mean you're going to light the entire room. So I, I, what I was saying, what, what kind of got me to, around to say that is that I, I think this was, in a lot of these are just subconscious things I go through on the day, throughout my day, and I say, okay, you know, wow, okay, I can relate that to this. I remember I did that. So now, you know, okay, I'll relate that to this. <clears throat> but what I realized is when, when, I go to, when I go to work, you know, or I'm just, you know, going wherever I'm going, going to the grocery store. And I just say, man, I go in the store and the gas station attendant is, is, is a mean dude. He's a mean guy. You know, I may be as happy as I can, but that doesn't mean that I'm not necessarily put happiness on him. He's going to be happy as me, you know? So what I'm trying to say is don't, don't force it. Don't force, don't force it because you waste your time. <laughs> you waste your time. Don't force it. <clears throat> And this one says, pray that the heavens accept me, though I don't accept myself. And this one is literally about character and um, just one loving who you are, loving who you are. And that, that's what I wrote last night. And I have, I have, you know, I have, you know, like a, big chunk so that I could I could read the rest of those pages. <laughs> you know um, that's what I wrote last night at three something, three forty around that time in the morning. Cause I was I was on I was on the phone and then I got off the phone and I said, okay, I'm right, man. Yeah. I see what yeah. I see what you're saying um, and what you're doing today. I mean find it very you know cool everything that just flows and then kind of like later on you analyze it you're like what does this mean what do i think this is about and then you kind of like break it down into different things and i'm not like oh is he i think any any type of art is just very open so anyone will interpret it any way they want like, however they feel about it when they read it yeah and kind of like what you're doing you're thinking about the person that wrote it like you're thinking about you know that oh and you're thinking about what they were thinking about what was going on in their mind to when they were writing it and i find it very interesting and very cool because now you're able to put it into what you're doing and kind of like that just kind of like it you know levels up your writing and what you're doing because there is a higher expectation to your writing and to what you're doing. And that's how it's very cool to see and kind of like break it down into what's going on. You know, a lot of times I, I had to, I had to learn like that. I had to, um, I had to begin to critique my, not necessarily criticize it, but just, just, yeah, analyze it. Man. I had to analyze my, my feelings because if you go back a year if i go back into um last last year so if i go back into 2019 um you know i i i can say to myself you know i would write uh i just closed my book just close it i am done it was more i <clears throat> the more i wrote the more i said okay, this is not a task this is a form of expression and you have to understand this expression because if you are like they say one day i post one thing and then somebody you know emails me hey i'm I like to publish this or blah, blah blah or i go and i try to get my, my work published and you know it's okay hey you know that's all it takes and then they ask me okay what does this mean how are we going to you know you know what does it mean you want to publish a book of poetry but we don't know what this means man you know, people are going to judge it. So I have to be able to tell them this is what this means. Or I put side notes in this. I have two two poems here that I put that they have no. And I tell you, these poems have have um, no real, real 
grab there's no real nothing to really grasp with these poems and um i i had to it took i was discussing with one of, with one of my peers you know what it what it meant i at first i talked to my uncle telling him, trying to find out what it meant and then i'm talking with my peers for at least like four four hours man my friend um patrick i was talking to my friend patrick um and he's like, man, you know, I gotta go to work. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know what he's telling me. Like, I can't tell you what it means. Yeah, right. So I'll, I'll read this to you here. This one is something that I don't really um um I I gotta so before I read it, there's two brothers and there's a mother. That's the best description I can give you for you to understand. And it is a di it's dialogue. It's dialogue. So two brothers. Dated far beyond my time, although I still remember your smile. How can you remember her smile when you have never seen it? And that's the last thing I remember about mother. I wish I were asleep. So these are two brothers having a conversation. One is having a dream about their mother who he has not seen his mother. The mother's, the mother's past deceased. So he's, the youngest brother is having a dream about his mother and the oldest brother asks, how can you remember her smile when you have not seen it? And he says, and that's, they discuss, they're discussing why, you know, the dream. And he says, and that's the last thing I, I I remember about mother and the oldest brother says, I wish I were asleep. So if I didn't tell you there was two brothers having a conversation, you'd be like, what are you talking about? You know, what is, what is, what? and some people would, or most people, you know, some people would get it and some people wouldn't get it, you know? So it all depends, it all depends. Mm -hmm. And um, I, this is the last one I'm gonna read. I don't wanna, this last one I'm gonna read. <clears throat> this one is between the person the mind and the questionnaire. So there's three three kind of people. It's a di dialogue once more, the person, the mind, and the questionnaire. Be silent, keep your life under the ropes. Don't flourish, let me diminish your hopes. Who are you talking to? So the question is, okay, so the person is, having a conversation with their mind. And the mind, their mind is telling them to be silent, to, you know, keep your life under the ropes. Don't flourish and let me diminish your hopes. This is the mind saying to the person. And there's a person that enters the room, the questionnaire and says, who are you talking to? But the person is talking to himself. It's just, you know, the person talking to himself. So that these are, these are more things that I wrote that I'm like, you know, I'm still kind of, apprehensive about but i accept them for what they are yeah and kind of like those stories that you're mentioning about it those last two uh when i was you know in high school i was taking spanish i took ap spanish and kind of like the teacher uh she was very she was a lot into poetry and she would you know mention poems i didn't understand poetry at that moment like now i have more of a of a grasp on it, I see it. I see that poetry when I when I read it, and I'm able to barely understand it. But she was very a lot into poetry. She was, you know, like into it, and she was reading like she would read the poems, and she would, you know, break it down like you're doing it into pieces, kind of like that. You know, there's a lot of people, you know, that like me that it's hard. You know, we have to read it like five times, six times to finally get it. And yeah. there's people like her, you know, they, they do it and they know how to explain it. And that's something that, you know, poetry, I think when you have that type of poetry that you have that, you know, it's hard to explain it, really plays a lot into, you know, like if we're thinking, you know, like higher, you know, than just, you know, what you are doing, like we're thinking uh, where this poetry is going. And I think it's going to big places, you know, and it could be, you know, like in universities, you know, like university students could be reading it or college students, community college. And I see that because, you know, like it's hard to explain it. But once you explain it, they're like, wait, what is that? And kind of like it amazes people. And 
that's that's something that I really see in your poetry because you know uh, it takes something to to understand it. But when you understand, when you understand, it, you're like, I see what this guy is doing. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. That's, that's, uh, that means a lot, man. Because like I said, man, I, 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 everyone that ever talks to me, you know, about my about my book, they all know that the first thing they say, you know, why, why, why do we have to have this deep conversation about your poetry? You're not gonna post it, you know. You're not gonna, you're not gonna share it. They always, I can always, you know, get that. You know, we have this, you know, long conversation. And what I, I like to talk to theologians about you know my 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 poetry you know um, and and um, honestly sometimes I, sometimes therapists about my poetry you know um, I could talk to them about it because they for some reason they tend to grasp it just just grasp first man when you're talking to a therapist they they understand you <laughs> they understand who you are you know that's their job so I would you know, um, older than I tell me I'll share my poetry. He said, Oh, I already know what you mean. What are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> so that's why I like to talk to, to therapists about it because, you know, they, if they know the person, they already know what you mean. Okay, I know what you are thinking. You know, I've been, you know, with you, you know, for this past however long, you know. Well, one thing I, I do to, to help me find out that little niche and what I what I mean and a lot of people should do um when it whatever you do I don't it doesn't matter what you, what you do you know and um, um definitely talk to someone about it I, I spent years not talking to anyone about it not asking any questions so now I, I just talk to people about it and I'm, I'm on the brink of trying to share more and I, I like I like these these kind of things that we do because this is essentially what we're talking about our journeys. Our journeys. That's what I do. Just talk about it. You, you say it. I mean, kind of feels good when you say it. And at some point, you know, like you say, it's therapeutic, and it's kind of like the way how it is helping you. It can help someone else, and it can you know like come to them and be like, I was thinking the same thing, and. This guy was able to write it and show it to me, just through mm -hmm. writing and then explain it to me. And, and I understand what this guy is saying, or you know, things like that. In the end, I think it's more for yourself and it's more like to help you grow because that's what, you know, art really does. It helps you, you know, like develop yourself. Just like wrestling, you know, you were talking about wrestling. As uh, you go, you get beat up by determining you're tired, you're like, man. You know, I feel like I'm dying right now. And <laughs> you kind of like, yeah. I mean, you do. You know, and, um, you, um, you know <clears throat> with the with expression, you can express in any type of way. You really can. And not only poetry, and I see how you express your art as well. You know, not only poetry. And, and sometimes, man, when we are, when we are expressing, um, there's there's a more clear perspective and sometimes there's there's stuff that's so crazy and you know we don't get it. it's mind boggling so we don't we don't get it but for as long as we find a way to let the, the people know what we're saying how you let the people know what we're saying even in your when you are and tell me this what is what is what is Cindy Lou about what is the, the what is tell me tell me about that what is what is that Cindy Lou I, uh, no, you you have a you have it says Cindy. You have so it's a you have a a painting uh, and it says Cindy on it. What is what is? Wait. Okay, tell me about that. Who is that? I'm a, I'm mean to ask you. You know, I don't know. Cindy, I haven't seen it. Let me find it right now. Which painting is it? It's um it's a painting. It's a girl. I think a girl in a yellow dress. Is it like uh oh Patsy Klein? Oh Pat yeah, Patsy Klein, yeah, Patsy Klein. <laughs> so yeah. yes, she's a she's a singer. She sings like you know, like country music, kind of like that, like old music. Okay. okay. And 
Yeah, and she's, you know, like in the story of one of my friends, I did a commission for him. And uh, to his, his dad passed away from cancer at the age of 50. So he told me his story and he wanted a painting for, you know, like in memory of him. So kind of like I made a painting and Patsy Klein, he told me that was his favorite singer. So I found a picture of Patsy Klein and I put her in the painting. But I grabbed the whole album of the of the of the of the, the cover and I put it in the painting and kind of like in between the album I put little words, you know, from his favorite songs. And then I did like little memories of his, you know, like pictures that he sent me. So I grabbed those pictures and I threw them kind of like behind those pictures. I do like little words, you know, behind it. And I like to tell the story of what was behind. Um, that's very commendable, man. I shit, I would have never known that. That's 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 deep. <laughs> I would have never known that. That's pretty cool, actually, man. Yeah, that's commendable. It is. That's a nice thing to do for someone, man. That makes my whole perspective of it change now. My my whole the, the way uh, the way <laughs> I didn't know I didn't I. But prior to not knowing this, I didn't I didn't know what it would have been. So I had my own ideas. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Now that I know it's well, what did it change about it, about your perspective? Oh man. One, I didn't know Patsy Klein was a country singer. So I, I was thinking, you know, okay, this is a this is an image of I was thinking like, okay, this is a woman with a bunch of Things. This is a lone woman with a bunch of things going on around in that world. Uh -huh. so, she has a lot on her table. That's a, a lot on her on her, on her, on her plate. And um, now that I know it's, it's that Patsy Klein is one of you know your friend's favorite singers, and the, the world around it is about you know his experiences and, and whatnot. It's like this. The singer must do must put him at peace. The singer must put definitely must put him at peace because if he he described to you his world around you know his experiences and or every memory and the singer probably you know just said you're making a collage and you uh, on the internet and you you put all these pictures and you put the singer across it the singer brings everything together so. It, it's, that's how that, that's how I look at it now, as if you know it's it's a collage and the singer. If you know who Patsy Klein is and was trying you know what she does for that art. Yeah. And um, what are three things that probably you know people don't know about you, but that you do that they can relate to it? People don't know about me. Um. Um, I swim. Oh, I, okay, do okay, hold on, hold on. What do you I'm 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 an avid runner, I'd say that. Um, but I don't know how many people know that about me, you know. Um I I and I, I run and I bike almost every day. Every day, nonstop. Nonstop. I don't know why. I just it clears my mind. It clears my mind. I don't I don't know why. Um <clears throat> So I try, I'm not fast. As you know, if you've ever seen me, my, my, I'm not fast at all. <laughs> but I get there when I get there. So um, I'm, I'm an avid runner. Um, I don't watch TV or play games. I don't. And I, I, I started from a young age. I had a GameCube back in like, I don't know, whenever GameCube grew out. Um, and my mom was better than me in Pac-Man. So I stopped. <laughs> okay, I'm getting beat by my mom. Mm -hmm. beat by my mom and Pac Man. I better so give it up. So I did. I gave it up. I don't play games and um, I, I don't watch that much TV, honestly. And I, I read, well, these aren't, these aren't necessarily things people don't know about me. Well, something that. <clears throat> I, I I tend to I tend to read a lot. I tend to read a lot. Um, 
And some of my books that I read, I, I, I'll post, some of them I don't. If I, if I like them, I'll post them. Like um, I was reading the book, um, Socialism, ah, it was a few weeks ago, it was about, it's basically a book about socialism. Um, I have it over there, but I, I don't want to leave the camera. But I was reading the book and um, I posted it. And, um, and I, sometimes when I read, I embody, I invite it. So if I read something that is about character, I'm like, okay, all right. Now I'm the, I'm that guy who's talking about now. <laughs> that guy who's talking about. There's a lot of things I do. I, I read a lot. I swim and I and I run a lot. And um, what's another thing? Did I already mention two things? When I read, I swim, and um, yeah, I don't watch TV. Man, I don't play games. I don't. I don't really do. I'm a nerd, man. <laughs> All right, yeah, those are those are three things about me. And yeah. that my secrets. And it has been a pleasure to talk with you for about an hour long already. Um, it was a pleasure to talk with you to get to know a little bit about your art and your poetry, what you're writing, and the story behind it. Um, are you uh, kind of like to finish the podcast? Are you planning on one day? Uh, writing a book or posting your poems like in a book like yeah i'm um one day um i want to write a few books and a few screenplays and um induce and put my poetry into my screenplays in my in my books that's what i hope to do because yeah, that's the goal man that's yeah that's i like it and thank you for inviting me man and when you when you when you you know call me i was like Okay, thank man. All right. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, well, thank you everyone for watching this show. Tell the stories today with that with uh, uh, I tell you, Gabriel Spencer. Yeah, yeah Gabriel is not my middle name. So, okay. Yeah, Gabriel is my middle name. How do you say your first name, Diana or Diana? Yeah. Diana? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people don't know. I got a girl's. I got a girl's first name. <laughs> but um, it's all right, man. I like it. It's, it's, it's a lady killer. Yeah. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, it was a pleasure to talk with him, and uh, I'll leave a link to his social media so you guys can go and follow him. You guys can go check about his art. He posts little things about what he's writing, and yeah, let's get it. All right.